Hey, hey, everybody, this is Andrew here from iDownload Blog. Today I am coming to you from San Francisco at WWDC. So this video is a little bit choppy, but this is a first look at iOS 10. Now there are a ton, and I mean a ton of things to see here in iOS 10. So this is just going to be a first look and overview. The first thing that we want to see is you don't actually have to press to wake up your phone any longer. It'll actually wake as soon as you pick it up. Yes, that means you don't have to press the home button or the power button on the side. If you swipe to the left is now how you'll access your camera. And if you swipe to the right is your new today and widget view. On top is your spotlight search, followed by a ton of different widgets. Now, there are a lot of cool things that these can do right now. Everything is fairly limited because we are obviously running in a beta and they take developer support to really make all the cool stuff happen. So what we're looking here are basically what's currently on iOS 9. But if we do look at the bottom of our ad widget screen, we have what's installed here at the top, but at the bottom at the adding section, you'll see a bunch of new ones coming from Apple. So you can see obviously all these mail, favorites, activity, maps nearby, maps, transit, music, notes, all these things that are new and have not been in iOS 9 are now new here in iOS 10. Again, there's a lot more you can do here, but we'll have to see those in the future. Next up is this press home to open. That's right, you can no longer just tap on that button to enable Touch ID, you have to fully depress the home button to actually unlock your phone. It is a minor change, but something people may have to get used to. So we've looked at our new today view, our new widget view there on the left. Next up we want to look at is Control Center, which has had a little bit of a makeover. So if we swipe up from the bottom of the phone like we always would do in the past to open up Control Center, you'll notice it looks a little bit different. For instance, AirPlay has been split between audio and video. We now have these new different screens that look similar to glances on the Apple Watch. Different apps can run here by support from developers and currently we just have music and home. Speaking of home, you may notice we have a new home app on our home screen. This is for HomeKit and it supports Touch ID to run different scenes without actually having to use Siri. When you open it up, it will show you the basic idea of HomeKit and the home application, which is basically to automate your home. It'll go through having you choose your favorite accessories, the ones you access all the time, and those will be things that'll be viewable when you swipe up from the bottom. You can also choose your favorite scenes and those can be accessible more quickly as well. Once your favorites are chosen and you are inside of the application, it looks really nice. It's very clean and simple with your favorites here on the front page. The second page has your scenes and of course any automation on the last. There are also new types of HomeKit accessories. You can actually now control things like home, like air purifiers, humidifiers, and cameras. Even doorbells are now supported inside of HomeKit. So a lot of new stuff there and obviously we'll be covering more of that as iOS 10 gets closer to release. Next up is News. News has a new icon and a few new features inside of it. It's been redesigned to look a lot better. It's been broken into different sections. So I have entertainment and sports and you know apps or whatever the different categories of news that I follow, it's broken up into different categories. They also now support subscriptions. So you can subscribe to things like Wall Street Journal or New York Times and get the latest news just like you would in a newspaper, but here inside of the News app. Obviously, it feels very reminiscent of Newsstand, but this time, it seems to work a lot better. Apple also fulfilled a wish of many people, as you can now remove stock apps. And when it's removed, you can download them again from the App Store. Not all can be removed, but many of them can. It's also notable that Game Center, the individual app, also is removed in this initial beta. The next area that's been updated is Notification Center. No longer is it two different tabs, but between the today view and notifications, obviously those widgets have been moved to that homepage zero position, and now this is just notifications. It's very easy to clear them individually. You can 3D touch on them, and obviously with more developer interaction, these are gonna be really filled out. There's gonna be a lot of cool features you can do when you 3D touch on these, but for now, they're fairly simple, but it'll allow you to really interact with them. We'll obviously be seeing a lot more as iOS 10 gets closer to release. Next up, let's look at Maps. Maps has been completely rewritten with a lot of new features. First off, the UI is more proactive, so it lets me know based on calendar events where I wanna go. It knows I go to work in the morning or it knows I have an event coming up this afternoon. So I can easily get directions to that location. Also on top of that, one of my favorite features, it actually shows you traffic en route. And when you see that traffic, if there is a quicker way, 
it'll pop up and let you know, hey, there is a quicker way to avoid this traffic and it'll save you maybe six minutes of time. So that's something that's going to be really beneficial, especially when you're going to work in the morning, there may be an accident on the highway you don't know about and you'll be easily be able to tell, uh, hey, there is traffic and I should take an alternate route. All of that aside, the other big addition is map extensions, which means we can look at things like making reservations for a restaurant we find using OpenTable or booking a ride using Uber or Lyft. Moving on in this massive iOS update is messages. Lots and lots of enhancements here in messages, and you'll notice it looks a little bit different. First, we can tap the arrow on the left hand side, which gives us three new icons. First, we have the camera icon. Stolen from Google, when you tap on that camera icon, it immediately brings up your forward facing camera, quick and easy to take a photo, or your recent camera roll. Next up is digital touch. Brought over from the Apple Watch, you can now draw and scribble and send little messages using all these different colors on this little color palette. So that's sketches, which is basically what we saw on the Apple Watch. There's also tapping and hold, which will allow you to do things like send your heart rate over. And then we have the just normal taps, so we can send just regular taps, like digital touch taps, that we would see on the Apple Watch. If we tap that little arrow though, it makes it nice and big and full screen, allowing us to draw on this full big palette here. Or, alternatively, when we do that, we can tap the camera button in that lower left hand side. That turns on the front facing camera, so it's looking at you, Hi there, and you can take a photo or a video and then annotate on that. So I can come here, maybe I wanna draw a pink little heart, perfect, and then I wanna send it on its way. So that is digital touch, and next up you'll notice that little app icon. That actually is for extensions in messages. So now we have all these different extensions we could use. So we have music, you can easily share music. There's images, you can look for random popular images. Or there's the first one here, which is just a bunch of classic Mac icons. If you tap this, it'll actually show you all the extensions that you have and all the recent ones. But unfortunately right now, it doesn't seem to be working. There's lots of stuff you can do here other than GIFs. There's stickers, which you can stick onto photos. Uh, again, lots you can do, and we'll see more from developers over time. When you do go to send, there are new animations, such as invisible ink that hides it until you touch it with your finger to move that stuff away. So anything that you don't want others to see or make a surprise. There is gentle, which will make it small and then get large, that bubble animation. There is slam and then the other one there. Uh, so different bubble animations you can do when sending a message. Then there's different full screen effects, such as balloons, confetti. If you're into music, you may also like lasers. If it is a holiday, you can always opt for fireworks. Or maybe if you're feeling lucky, you can wish on a shooting star. So lots of different cool full screen animations that just dissolve right afterwards. So those are really neat that you can use. A lot more messages and we'll look at those in the future, but up next, let's take a look at the new music application. First up, new is now switched over to library. That's right, you can actually see your music now separated out from Apple Music. Shows your downloaded music as well as different categories. And down below, you'll see anything that's been recently added. Next up on the list is for you. So these are Apple Music suggestions if you subscribe to Apple Music and it'll give you the ones that are recommended for you. Browse are just all this different music you can search through and curated ones from the Apple Music editors. We have radio, which is Beats 1 and all the different radio stations and you can look and play those on demand. And then simple search. What's new in photos? Unfortunately, the biggest thing in photos is memories but there are also cool things like facial recognition and there's a lot we wanna see here, but unfortunately it takes a really, really long time to scan a library as large as mine. So we'll have more with the whole new Photos app in the future to see what it really can do. Now again, these are just a few of the things here in iOS 10 and we'll be touching on a lot more in detail going into the future. If you have any questions about iOS 10, go ahead and let us know. But otherwise, please go ahead and subscribe so you can keep up with all of our WWDC 2016 coverage for iPhone, iPad, Mac, Apple TV, and Apple Watch. Until next time, this is Andrew for iDownloadBlog.